Hey, what up, fam? It's Jake. How you guys doing? Talk. Talk, talk, talk. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Let us know what it is. If you guys are on here. Welcome to Fight Fearlessly. Never give up. By our sister, Yvonne Perez. Yep. I'm trying to share this out myself. I think we're out of our comfort zone. <laughs> we haven't done a live like this in a long time. We thought we were going to be getting in interviewed. <laughs> yeah, we thought we were going to be like on the other end of the camera. And, and Yvonne was going to be on here with us asking questions Hola. or something. So. Christon, Christ, Christina Rangel, what's up? What up, fam? How you guys doing? Much love. Let me share this out. I told the gangs for Jesus and everyone to share this out as well. So, and Let today, me see. what are we going to talk about? Lad Victor, how's it going, my brother? What's up? Can I share this out? Show some love. We're supposed to be talking about how did she say it? Couple, couples in ministry. Yep. Or um, marriage in ministry. Married people doing ministry, and I guess uh, maybe a little bit of travel. What it's like to be a married couple in ministry. Okay. Yeah. What it's like to be married in ministry. A married couple. Mm-hmm. Never give up. So let me see. Uh, well, I'm not sure that. I don't really. I guess my own personal opinion. I don't really feel qualified. Hola, fam. <laughs> Gangs for Jesus. Much love to you both. Much love, sis. To answer such a question. Um, I'm sure there are other more highly qualified couples in ministry um but it's an honor an honor thank you sister for inviting us and and for um you know asking our opinion and our take on this subject in being married and uh doing ministry um let me see i'm sure for every couple it's different a married couple i don't know I'm trying a, to a lot of couples know. probably have more um I don't know, mature partners. My partners, <laughs> my partners like living with a kid. Um, How do you share this out? I'm trying to share this and out. And I'm like, he sometimes he tells me I'm I'm like living with the old grand with the grandma. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I don't know when you got someone that's very. I'm very serious a lot of time. Um, maybe detailed, not. I guess detailed, not super. Uh, I've learned to relax on that, right? Um, but it's a challenge when you're when you're complete opposites. Um, mm. I think I think it is a. Are you done there? I guess it's not gonna let us share until we're done. So, anyways, um, so yeah, fam. Um, we came on. We're in beautiful California. Um, San Francisco. San Francisco. So everyone knows um, we travel all the time. Could you guys hear us pretty good? If you guys could hear us pretty good, um, let us know. Just just say yes. Throw some hearts up, some loves up, some likes up. I can't see the comments. Something like that. I put on my reading glasses. Yeah. Can everyone hear us pretty good? There we go. We have six six people. That Victor. Yes. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right, so um, they call me the gangster preacher um, and Pastor Isaiah Blancas. I have a, a ministry called Gangsters for Jesus, and uh, we're from El Paso, Texas. I'm from El Paso, Texas. My wife is from Ohio, uh, but our ministry, our main ministry, we have um, gangsters for Jesus all over the country and in different countries. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're always traveling. Um, that's why we're in San Francisco right now. We're going to be um, in Brentwood, I believe, next. And then after that, in Hercules, California. Then after that, Lake Tahoe. Then after that, uh, Kentucky. Then after that, Ohio. Then I'm just booked all year. So, yeah, man. I don't know how to share this out. But if you guys can share this out, share it out, fam. Show some love. Share it out. We, we aren't technical savvy here. We have no technical support in this hotel room. Yeah, so um, Yvonne wanted me to share a few things. Um, my book is one of them. Um, like I said, they call me the Gangster Preacher. You could go to www.gangsterpreacher.com um, to check out all my stuff. Um, I have a book out called From the Streets to the Throne by Isaiah Blancas, by me. 
and it's um it's, it's on, on there she's wearing the shirt from the streets of throne i'm wearing gangsters for jesus and um so yeah man um that book um has done amazing things and miraculous things it's already sold over ten thousand copies mm -hmm. uh most authors um that make a, a book or write a book that are authors they usually only will sell maybe 150 or 300 copies throughout their lifetime so it's pretty amazing what the book's doing the book is in um prison systems rehabs it's in the streets uh people buy it everywhere we go mm -hmm. it's in colleges they actually do studies on my life in certain colleges which i found out which is amazing um so yeah that's my book but you could go to gangsterpreacher.com and see that i've also been on the 700 club you could see my 700 club interview there that went out to over 88 countries and over 360 million homes mm -hmm um also um they're making a movie about my life so they're writing a script right now so that's a little bit about me the gangster preacher um my and gangsters for jesus and gangsters ministry. For jesus, our ministry we do church in the alley mm -hmm. so we actually have a church in the alley in um, el paso texas and also um las cruces new mexico and we're starting more but like i said there's gangsters for jesus everywhere um all gangs for just are straight up soldiers, man. On the website, you can also click on there and it'll give you a link like for the book to where you can go to and it'll take you straight to Amazon and you can buy the book. You can click on Church in the Alley. There's a link for that and it will show like live videos or like stuff we do uh, in the alley, what that pertains to. You can click uh, Isaiah. It'll give you information. It'll give you the 700 Club interview. About and my date. Information on You can click schedule and it'll show you the schedule, like where he's going to be preaching or ministering at. Um, I'm not sure. We do have clothing on there, but that part is still being, we haven't got that Worked completely on. set up. Um, you can click on, and I think I have one example of a t-shirt. Um, but t in order to actually order t-shirts uh, and apparel or merchandise, you can uh, click there and leave us a message or contact us through Facebook or the messenger email, messenger email stuff like that. Uh, yeah. And then we can ship merchandise to you. But my sales is not completely finished on my, um, I believe it's Shopify we're on. Um, but yeah, I haven't quite figured out it and got all of that finished uh we've been working on that uh, but we do have uh hats t-shirts beanies um sweatpants t-shirts um string backpacks uh what else we have all types of stuff. Just all different things that we've sold all shoes we've sold the Phantom plus the yeah isaiah calls them that how so, shoes all right so look we're gonna get started fam um I, I already got lots of things i could talk about about being a, a couple in ministry and being a traveling couple in ministry and being pastors mm -hmm. um but i wanted to you know ask you guys what kind of questions you wanted to ask us um if you guys want to shoot some questions up on here we'll read them and i'll and, and we'll answer them for you but um mm -hmm. For me, um, a lot of people know who I am, the gangster preacher. A lot of people will always tell me, oh, wow, the gangster preacher, you're famous. And I always tell people that Jesus is famous, um, not me. Um, so I preach many, many places and, and, and do many things for God. Um, my wife travels with me everywhere we go. It's very rare when she doesn't come with me. So we are a, a traveling, preaching couple. And um, I will say this, um, you guys, like I said, shoot some questions up, but it's not, I think, what many people think it is. I think a lot of people think, um, you know, when they see my life or, or, or go see me preach somewhere, mm -hmm. um, because I've preached at uh, like mega churches, I've preached at small churches, medium sized churches, events, I've preached to over 10,000 people, um, I've preached to as few as one, two, three in the streets. I mean, to me, it doesn't matter. Um, our church in the alley is um, um, an amazing church and um, amazing miracles and testimonies come out of our church at Church in the Alley, El Paso, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a beautiful thing, but 
I, I think a lot of people think things it's not, I would say. Um, a lot of times what will happen is they'll say, man, we want to, they'll tell me this, right? Thank you, Cecilia. And they'll say, uh, they'll tell my wife this, well, especially me. We want to, we want to be like you, right? We want to be like the gangster preacher. And I'm, in my head, I'm thinking like, man, like, I don't, I don't think they understand what they're asking here. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's, it's not easy. Um, it's hard. We've left every single thing to preach this gospel, literally. And, um, are we effective? Yes. Are we anointed to do this? Yes. Has God blessed our, our ministry? Uh, yes. Uh, tremendously. Uh, but, I think a lot of times they they just see the limelight of it. They see the the glitz and glamour of it. They see the hotels. They see where we're at. They see the traveling. They see, you know, the stuff they want to see. I guess really, and to be honest, that's that's not what it is. Uh, for me, uh, it's it's uh, not getting much sleep. Like out here, we're taking a few days off, and I've learned to do that. Over time, me and my wife always take a day off every week. Or if we don't go, you know, two, we don't go two weeks without taking at least two days off then. And that's what we're doing right here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Yvonne Perez, can you share when you travel the attacks of the enemy and how you overcome them? Yes, I'm going to share that. That's actually mm -hmm. what I'm going to start talking about right now. Um, so... Yeah, a, a lot of people see all that, but they don't see the attacks. That's exactly what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. The struggles, you know, the sleepless nights. Um, for instance, many nights will only get, let's say, and this is all the time because we travel year round. I book every three months and I'm booked like constantly every three months. And if we're home, it's because we have special guests. And and we're still very busy. She says, "Come to San Diego and relax." Amen. <laughs> yeah, San Diego is nice. We like the zoo there. Yeah, it's beautiful. But um, yeah, man. Um, what what I was saying is that um, you know, um, it, it's not all glitz and glamour. Uh, attacks come. Uh, we usually only get maybe four to seven hours of sleep. It's like if we're living out of our car, out of a suitcase. Yeah. Um, and that's really what it is uh besides that crazy attacks come a lot of people think that it's all like i said glitz and glamour well, i think too when you um you have to think when you're gonna financially be planning uh you know you have to be responsible a responsible steward for uh also the things that god are get, is giving you you know just because um Let's say you get a, a nice size offering or something, and sometimes you don't get an offering, right? Because it's not for money. Uh, but at the same time, you know, even though we we do have bills, we do have, for instance, there was a time we were in uh, Wyoming, and we were driving, I believe, back from Montana. Uh, I think we were either going to, not Ohio, right? I think we were going home from Montana, and we were coming through Wyoming, and there's a huge stretch of highway out there that is like desolate. Like there's nothing, not houses, not animals. It's just nothing but land and huge highways like up and down the mountain. And big semi trucks travel that. And uh, we were coming close to, um, what was it we were stuck at? It wasn't Cheyenne, right? It was. Um, I don't know. I don't remember. It happened to be a decent sized city, but they're they're spread out. It's not like you know, like California, like L.A. or, or Texas, or El Paso, like a city. Yeah, it's it's very widespread before there's anything. And uh, our little car at the time we was driving a uh, 2008 Mercedes Benz, and uh, the belt broke. So we're trying to get up this mountain and we were doing about, we would go so far, like 25, 30 mile an hour. I think we might've got to 45 mile an hour <clears throat> and um, it would get hot. So we'd pull off and then we'd let the car cool down and then we'd drive again. And I had bo already booked the hotel for that night in this specific, I think it was Sherry, Sheridan, Wyoming, something like that. Um, anyway, so we had our room reserved there, but we were like so many miles away. So we, we, when the car broke down, we were 25 miles from our hotel, right? 
And I know to some people like, yeah, that's okay. And we have, um, thankfully, Isaiah's mom pays triple A, right? And she puts Isaiah on there. But she doesn't do the uh, extended, like, mileage. She does basic. So we have five miles covered by triple A. Only five miles. Anything above five miles, you pay for. So we're there. And are you watching for questions? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. So anyway, we're there and, and we're like stuck. So we're praying, you know, I'm praying. Isaiah's like, oh, everything's going to be all right. And it's very dark. So like I tell you, there's nothing out there and there's wild animals. I mean, you're in the middle of Wyoming. Like there's like mountain lions, there's bear, there's crazy stuff out there. And so we're going <laughs> and I'm like, oh Lord, you know, we need to make it or whatever. So we, we keep doing this and pulling over and at the very end, the car finally stops and it won't do anymore. It won't go any further. And then, so we're sitting there and we call AAA and we're calling, we're waiting. So then we have the blinkers on, you know, because these trucks come and they're coming down this mountain and you can't, they can't see us if there's no lights because there's no lights on the highway. So we have our blinkers. So when they would come, we would hit the flashers. And so they would see that we were on the side of the road and right at the moment, that the flasher, the battery gave out. There was no more flashers to turn on. We couldn't turn the car on. And then, you know, like within, what, three minutes, here comes the tow truck, finally. And it's about 2 a.m. by now. But the thing was, once we get going and we get in the truck, we get there, guess what? We were five miles from the hotel. We're five miles. So then we get in, and Isaiah tells the tow truck driver, you know, I want to bless you. It's late at night. And I think Isaiah gave him like $50. And so he volunteers to take our car to Firestone to the shop to get worked on from the hotel without us. So the next morning we can just walk over or go find the, the Firestone. So we ended up not paying for the tow because it was within five miles. The guy was courteous enough to leave us at the hotel so we didn't have to walk from the, the car repair shop. And we ended up being in the hotel for only, what, two days, maybe a day and something, and they got right. it fixed. But thing is, is that God, right at that last minute, see, God steps in and he provides the way. He provides everything that was needed. And for the stewardship, see, my husband, he keeps money. So at times, we don't just spend everything that God has given us. We prepare for times like yeah. this. Yeah, well, I was going to I was gonna say this, too, because... um. A lot of people will ask me, like, what what would it take for you to come preach for us? And some people I've been with, and they've told me, man, we're we're ready to pay you like five, ten grand, mm -hmm. like to have the gangster preacher come out. And I actually don't charge. Um, I do tell them whatever God puts in their heart an offering. And some people give more, some people give less. Some people have gave me thousands upon thousands of dollars, like high amounts. Um, some areas like there's rehabs and um you know the streets like if i'm out here like i'm in san francisco i'll go to the tenderloin a lot or if i'm in la i'll go to skid row you know there's no there's no money there like at our church church in the alley we're working with homeless people with prostitutes with gang members with people like that so we ain't getting money off that right and um but i don't i don't charge a fee me myself personally i don't feel comfortable now do i feel like people should understand that we're uh traveling uh you know team ministry and 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 that that i'm coming from far away and and should do their best for the man and woman of god yeah i do um because i do the same for for our guests i believe if we are doing this for god's kingdom and if you're gonna do this you mm -hmm. should do this in excellence mm -hmm. and if you're not gonna be excellent in what you do for god then don't do it at all right and um, the last book of Revelations, uh, it talks about this. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the last book and some of the last verses, you know, it, it says if you're going to continue to live the way you're living, continue to do that. If you're going to continue to be righteous, continue to be righteous, right? But if you're going to live for this kingdom and for this gospel, be excellent in everything you do. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this too because my wife bring up my mom um, paying that AAA card. Let me tell you guys, my mom and my dad have not been in my life since I was... A little kid mm -hmm. it's in my book but that's one of the only things she's ever done for me in my whole life <laughs> is 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 that 
is, is she she away. just she's not right in her head Maybe to be honest. Away. She's not right in her head at all. Um so for her to even do that, um that that that, that that's just crazy in itself, right? Um but I I want to talk to you guys about a little bit more serious issues mm -hmm. than what my wife's talking about, you know, just just the car and stuff like that that we deal with. Well, she said attacks of the enemy, that's just one. Yeah, uh, and that's a minor a minor thing compared to stuff that I've dealt with and attacks that when, when come you... with with um preaching the gospel. Um how about when we were in, coming back from Georgia? That I'm going to talk about yeah. that. Yep. Yep. And so, when we were coming from Montana. Yep. So within the last three and a half <laughs> years, stuff that my wife is bringing up right now, um, um, I've almost died twice. Um, once of COVID where I almost died, and then I was on oxygen for three months. Mm -hmm. uh, another time that my wife is talking about, we were in Mississippi uh, preaching, traveling, and a gallstone had got stuck in my gall neck and it was uh, the size of a golf ball and it was poisoning my blood and I almost died again. You see, um, these are attacks that that people don't see. They just see, like I said, the glamour, the limelight, the glitz, you know, all this, oh wow, the you know, the gangster preacher's here, he's there, he's, he's everywhere, right? Um, just like my wife is saying, um, for me, it's not, about money like mm -hmm. do we have bills do we, do we all uh live in a economic world yes we do mm -hmm. um but it's 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 more for me and my wife it's more about the currency from heaven and i always tell people right. that and that is souls yeah that's god's currency if you're not serious it's gonna take you out yeah you that's quit. that's god's money but we do sell merch right like um like my sister yvonne was saying at the beginning that we have gangsters for just merch and and to be honest and and books and uh, just all types of beanies, hats, everything, all types of, like my wife was saying, and, mm -hmm. and people are very, um, I mean, beautiful, um, amazing to us. I, I really believe it's God's favor on, yeah. on our life because we sell out everywhere we go. Um, I cannot complain yeah. because I know other pastors that, that, that barely scrape by every month. Yeah. And well, to be honest, we put on here where God abides, He provides. Yeah, and that's the truth. Yeah, that's truth. When, and, and when God's behind it, you know, and we're called to do what we're doing. Yeah. When you are truly, I think where you're supposed to be, you yeah. know, it's just miraculous the things that we see that God provides and does, and in every situation. I yeah. mean, you can name any any given situation, any given thing, and God has always come through for us i mean god is always not that it's easy you know even though god comes through doesn't mean the situation's easy or that the outcome's what you wanted it to be it, it still may not be what you thought or or in the way you thought or be glamorous you know like people think but in every situation we've never been left destitute god has always made a way out god has always provided we've always you know, had a bed to sleep on or a, we are not hungry, all these different things, um, you know, that God even provides for us and dealing with people like my husband, when situations like this happen, my husband is a, a tremendous faith builder. Everything that he says out of his mouth is always faith, faith, faith. It's never like, um, you know, oh man, what are we going to do? Like we're sitting on the side of the road or like he said, he's dying. He's literally throwing up black stuff and, and all these things happening or bleeding. And, and yet he'll say, oh, well, everything's fine. Oh, God will take care of it. Oh, it's all right. Or, or something crazy. And I'm just like, okay, well, Jesus needs to like step in the room right now. <laughs> because if not, we need a physician. We need a real live doctor here. Like, and you know, and Jesus is the doctor, right? But. Um, for me, that's what, I guess that's kind of what I was saying before where, with that childlike faith. I'm more logical. Um, Isaiah is strictly faith based. Well, for so. me, I, I, I feel, I feel like this, right, fam? For all you guys that are watching, um, I, I feel like this, like, I, to be honest, I could care less if I live or die. I mean, I've been in lots of situations in my life. If you guys read my book, From the Streets mm -hmm. to the Throne, um, I started doing time when I was nine years old and I got saved in SEG. 
you know, when I did get saved, the book's a great book. Um, like I said, you click on gangsterpreacher.com, it pops up. You could get it from Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 so for me, I, I just, it doesn't matter if I live or die, well, it, to be honest. And um, I'm sure not all men. I mean, I'm maybe, all, I don't know if that's coming from a man's perspective or if it's just from your perspective. Because some some women don't are like that. Some women are very faith uh, oriented, and they don't care, and they have something positive to always say. You know, I think it's a combination of the couple, whether it's the male or the female. Because in some instances, there are couples where the the females more like Isaiah, or more, and the man's more like me. You know, more of a different different um, personality and way of doing things because we all have those different things and the differences between men and women and I think as well like where we come from in life you know like Isaiah is saying his life and and the way he grew up and the things he dealt with that's that's the reason why he kind of sees things the way he sees things right and then for me I, I grew up completely opposite I grew up completely different um, a different, not even just a different lifestyle, but a different culture. I'm not Mexican. Um, you know, I'm Caucasian or white, whatever. And so we grew up in different, you, you grew up in different areas of life. I didn't grow up in the, in, a, I grew up in a nice suburban neighborhood for a little while. Then I grew up in the country where my neighbors were like almost a mile away. I didn't really per se have neighbors. Like, you know, you have to, drive to your neighbor's house or, or walk a quarter of a mile to get to their house um, versus someone like Isaiah who's always been in the city, you know, right next to each other. You know, I always say, you know, you cough or you have an argument and the whole neighborhood knows about it. Everyone can hear like, you know, um, you're not allowed to park your car in certain places, all these types of things. So. Someone asked on here what, what the name of the book is. It's From the Streets to the Throne by Isaiah Blancas, and it's on Amazon. You could go to gangsterpreacher.com and, and get it. Um, also, I saw on here that someone said, you're balanced. And yes, uh, we are balanced. We teach mm -hmm. our ministry, Gangsters for Jesus, to be balanced. That's one thing as traveling preachers um, <laughs> that I that I see that. a lot, right? Gina, uh, it's in the book. You got to get she the book. She wants to know sis. how we met. So, and we can talk about that too. Um, so about being balanced, um, I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. Um, because as we travel, uh, as 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 preachers, and as I travel preaching this gospel everywhere, I see a lot. So I see a lot mm -hmm. of um different um demonic activity i see a lot of principalities and powers mm -hmm. and i just don't see it uh from let's say someone that is only in one city or one state's perception i i see the whole the whole view really of what's going on throughout our country and and, and different countries that uh, you know like latin america i've preached that um so i see quite a bit and I will say this, balance is very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, I teach this to my ministry because many times that I've preached, I always say it's very sad, to be honest, for me. And I'll get back to what we deal with, um, getting attacked. But for me, it, it's it's so sad because 99% of the churches I go to are dead. But they think they're alive. And now my, my ministry knows I feel like this, but... I want you guys to understand where we're coming from and why I say stuff like this and and um, what we see, all right? Um, a lot of times we'll see churches that believe that, you know, it's all about taking demons out, right? The demon take routers, I call them. And then in other churches, we, we see a lot of um, them that, that say, oh, we have wisdom here. Or there's some churches that say, oh, we have teachers here. You know, we have teaching, great, the best teaching. Or, or some churches that say we move in the spiritual realm hardcore here, right? Or some churches that say, oh, we move in prophecy hardcore here. Or some, you know, that do street ministry as well or stuff like that. But what I do not see in a lot of these places is balance. You see more of one or the other. And exactly what a sister said on here is very, very true. 
because there has to be balance. Mm -hmm. Because if it, you, you, when you look at these churches and we go visit them and we preach at them, um, you'll see one or the other, but not balance. And what happens is you'll see a dying church. You know what many churches remind me of nowadays that we go to is someone that's sick and that is dying. Like I had my, my grandmother, uh, one of my grandmothers died not too long ago and another one died maybe, I don't know, 20 years ago, something like that around there. But when, when you, when you visit someone that's dying, right? They give them pain medication. They give them, um, you know, stuff to ease their pain while they're dying, mm -hmm. right? Balance how that's, I'm going to bring that up right now. Um, so that's a question they had. And Balance Gina's how. Gina's doing. Yeah. So, um, in other words, I see churches that are dying. Um, and instead of the pastor, you know, confronting sin, um, confronting problems, being real about stuff that's going on in the world right now, they're like in this fairy tale land, like where, where they're just in their four walls and, act like everything's all good and, and nothing ever, you know, bad is ever coming their way and stuff like that. So what I mean by, by someone dying, it's like the churches are dying. And instead of them saying, Hey, let's get on point. Let, 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 let's talk about stuff that's really going on. Let's talk about problems that are really affecting our world right now in this church right now, you know, in religiousness right now, you know, they don't do that. And there's no balance. Now, what I mean by balance is we should, Operate in fivefold ministry, right? And whoever's watching here should know what fivefold ministry is and in the nine gifts. And that's what we do at our ministry at Gangsters for Jesus. You see, um, let's just say this. Um, I've been to places where people move in the spiritual realm hardcore. And I'm going to bring a few examples up because you said balance how. Um, they move in the spirit realm hardcore. And they could see visions. They could, they could say, man, I, you know, I, I seen Jesus. I seen this and that, whatever. But if you're not saving souls, then what's the point? It, now let's say this too. If you're a, in a church where you're taking demons out all the time and, and people say, wow, demons came out and all this stuff. Okay. That's great. But if you're not saving souls, then what's the point? Now, if you go to another church that has a lot of wisdom, right, or knowledge, or they're teaching, uh, you know, great messages, but they're not saving souls, then what's the point? Now, uh, let me ask you this. You know, us as traveling ministers, it's a very big thing. People ask me all the time, what's your vision, right, for the gangs for Jesus? What's our vision? It's very simple. It's saving souls. It's bankrupting hell and making sure you know, that we can take as many souls to the kingdom of God as we possibly can, right? So let's, 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 let's say, um, all these people are doing all this different stuff, but souls aren't being saved, man. And a lot of these churches I go to, it's a, for years and years and years, I'll go back to many, many churches and it's the same people. They have the same problems. They're going through the same issues and very few souls are being saved. Now let's say, it's great, right? It, it says even in the Bible, if one soul, one, goes to heaven, heaven rejoices. And that's great. You know, but I, I know many churches where they'll be like, wow, we got five people saved this month or 10 people saved the whole year. And for me, that's just, it's very concerning as a, as a minister of the gospel, as someone that, that, that is like a, a modern day soldier, like Paul, I would say. Mm -hmm. Because I really live it. And when I say I live it, I live it. There, there, I, I, I'm, like I said, I'm from El Paso, Texas, Juarez, Mexico area. I have pictures of, of, of pastors that mm -hmm. I would preach with and half of them are dead from preaching the gospel. So I go to places where you can literally die and, 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 and I've preached the gospel in places like that. So I, I, to be honest, I have no fear. It's straight boldness wherever I go, where this gangster preacher goes. And I don't care if I die, to be honest, for the gospel. For me, it, it's, it's, it's glory because I know I'm going to be in glory. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, I'm going to be in heaven with and the I king of the, glory. The balance comes in is because I do care if I die, right? I don't, I don't want to die, but I'm going to heaven and when I'm prepared to die, right? 
So we don't have the exact same perspective, but I am willing as a soldier of God, as a woman of God, uh, before I even married Isaiah or met Isaiah, I was a servant of God and I had given my life or my whole heart, I guess you would say, to Jesus Christ. And when we, when we say to God, you know, God, I'm willing to do, I, I would pray prayers it, that I would say, God, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. Father God, let me be a light to the world. Let me help people. Let me help children. You know, these would be my prayers. I want to be like, you know, how Samuel or, or, uh, or Elijah says, here I am, God, Lord, send me. Here I am, send me. We, we quote these things to God. And you know, a lot of us, we, we talk in prayer and we'll say, um, you know, we'll quote scripture when the, the, sometimes people preach, right? And they'll say, well, give the word back to God. Give God scripture back to him because God's word never goes void and he's faithful to fulfill it, right? But the Bible also talks about not making an oath before God and breaking it. And a lot of times in prayer, we get down and, uh, no, I'm not from Texas, sis. I'm from Ohio. Um, not originally. I've been in Texas 14 years. But we say these things to the Lord, you know, and I would be like, God, I'll do anything. I'll go to the ends of the earth for you. And, and, you know, because you saved me and, and I was in a bad marriage and I had different things that happened in your life, you know, and you pray and you seek refuge for me. When I found Jesus, that was where my comfort was. That was where my, my refuge was, where I sought peace, where I sought like answers to life situations. Um, so for me going and crying out in my closet and, or in my room, wherever you pray and saying, God help me, you know, with this, God help me with that. And then, you know, your God makes a way out and, and you look back and you come past that. And then you grow this love, you grow this appreciation, right? You grow this reverence for Jesus and who he is when you get close to him, when you begin to rely on him. And, and as a woman, you know, I can't really talk about how a man would feel, but as a woman, you, he gave me that comfort. He gave me that peace and, and I didn't have that pain and that hurt in your heart. You know, he heals and he hurt, heals that brokenness. And then I began to grow and, and do more in ministry in my church. So I would stay, make these statements to God. And then, you know, I didn't know that eventually God was going to bring this person in my life or this man in my life and I was going to fall in love. And then out of that, this guy was going to be this powerhouse for God. Like, yeah, I wanted my husband to serve God, right? But we think in our heads like, okay, I'm going to get a great husband going to serve God. We're going to go to church every week. My kids are going to have a good life and we're going to have cookouts and, and everything like that. We're going to be happy in God. You know, which is good because, of course, we want that and we want to be blessed. But I wasn't thinking God thinks far beyond what we do, you know, and are we ready? Uh, when we make these statements to the Lord, sometimes he'll test that out. You know, I lost everything. I lost my home. I was losing my car. I didn't have a job. I was being divorced. All these bad things were happening in my life. And I was driving home one night late from college. And I was crying to God. And I was like, God, you said that my life was going to be better. You said that I was going to have a husband that would serve God. And I'm losing everything. And you know what the Lord spoke to me? He said, how can I give it to you if you won't let go? If you don't let go of what you have now, I can't give you anything brand new. You know, he said, you said you would serve me even if you lost it all. You said you would serve me. And I said, you know what, God, that's true, Lord. I will serve you even if I lose everything. I'm going to serve you. And you know what? I did. I lost everything. But like two, almost two years later, I was sitting in my home one night in the living room. And I was just looking around by myself. And the Lord brought that back to me. And I was sitting in a brand new house that no one ever lived in. I had a brand new husband that served the Lord. My kids were with me. Everything was good. So God brought everything back, but I had to let go in order to receive. We can't just keep all of these things and keep all of these things and never let go and let God. And even though it might seem rough or we don't understand in the beginning, 
But see, God sees the end from the beginning. He don't see what we see. We see the beginning and we're looking for the end. We don't know the future, but he does. So if we trust that unchanging hand to lead us and guide us, he'll lead us everywhere we go. And when we look back, we'll never lose more than we can gain. Never. Whether it's houses, whether it's relationships, whether it's, it's no matter what it is in your life on this earth. See, we're looking for the life in the next, in heaven, on the, in the next earth. In the new earth and new heaven as Revelation states. We're not looking for the reward here. We only reap blessings here because we reap what we sow. But this is not the end game. We're working for a higher calling for a higher purpose. And we have to remember that as men and women of God. And when God brings someone in your life that's that's strong like that, we have to rise to the call. If I was the kind of, if I chose to say, I'm not going to go, I'm going to stay home. You know, and there's instances where I did have to stay home. I didn't always get to travel all the time with Isaiah. He had a business. We, we conducted business. Sometimes he would leave on business. I would stay home. Make sure the kids went to school, do things just like a, a regular wife would do, right? But then we got to a point in our lives where God said, this is it. Is This is going to change. And now you're both going to go. And for me, I could send Isaiah sometimes by himself. But I feel more secure when I'm with him. Because I am the helpmate. I am the helper. So I am to help my husband. And if I'm at home, how am I going to help him? I could help him from the phone maybe or something. But for me personally, I feel that my call is to be next to him. Is to be here to help him drive the car if necessary. Um, you know, help him sell the, the merch. Help him what, in whatever area. Minister for people. Pray for people. Give the word of God. Encourage him. Keep him in line. Maybe not always encouraging him. Sometimes putting him in check. You know, like, hey do this. Hey, straighten up. You know, we boss each other. I think in, in marriage, first of all, in marriage and God, God is the center, but we have to be equally balanced to, to sometimes give, sometimes take, sometimes be stern and sometimes be, um, how's that word? Like gracious or merciful, right? We have to learn that type of balance. I have to learn when to say to my husband, hey, it's my turn. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to do this and I'm going to speak. Sometimes I have to learn to say, okay, it's not my turn. Listen to my husband and shut up and let him speak and let him do what needs to be done. There are, there are balance in every area, not only in ministry, but we have to lead together by example. Not only for the children in our household, our own children, but in the ministry, the children, our, our children, spiritual children, right? The men and women that God has sent us to the ministry because we want them to be strengthened as well. We want to show strength. We want to show remorse. We have to show every aspect of life just as Jesus did. There were times when Jesus was very compassionate. There was a time when Jesus cried. There was time when Jesus was very stern and he was very strict. So we have to, in, as ministers and leaders in the gospel, we have to show all these traits as well so that the people that are being taught under us or the people, even our children that carry on the legacy and generations to come, they can pick up and learn from these examples and be strong men and women of God to carry that torch, to save souls. Just as my husband said, the, the ultimate thing is to save people because that was Je Jesus came to save the world, right? To save souls. He didn't come to give us some religious background or to tell us all these other aspects. Yes, all of that's in the book and goes to it. When we got a question, we go to the Bible and we learn but the aspect that we are here is to present the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not the savior. Isaiah is not the savior of the world. Jesus is. So we are here to say to the people in the world, to the church, to the married people, this is the foundation of God that God has built. Let's work and continue to build. We have to continue to build the same way that the apostles built. And they weren't building buildings. They were building people. So we have to build people. And if we have no strong marriage structure, 
then how are we going to reproduce? How are we going to have fruit? Men and men don't reproduce babies. Women and women, yeah, we can adopt, you can do all that. But we're talking about a natural occurrence from God, a supernatural occurrence from a body, from a man to a woman. You produce children. So therefore, God set marriage to be one thing, to stay together, to produce generation after generation, to carry on the legacy. And if we don't stay together and we constantly are divorcing everyone we get with, then we're never going to have firm foundations. See, and we all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. We've both been divorced. We're, this is our second marriage. But see, we know going into this, we got to make this work. We have to, and we have to make this work for the kingdom. Because if we're not on one page and trying to make this work, then how is the ministry going to go forward? Then when I stand before God, he's not going to say, well, Isaiah, this, he's going to say, you, you had a job to do. You have to learn how to deal with Isaiah. You have to learn how to deal with your life. You have to be on point, right? So for me, that's the way, that's kind of like my mentality on how I think to get the job done. Because ultimately, it's not about me. It's about God. It's about what Jesus wants to accomplish through my life on this earth, through my husband's life. And, and for me, it's even more of my husband than me because he's the front runner, right? He's, I always tell him, you're the star of the show, <laughs> you know? So for me, I feel that God has a stronger anointing in my husband's testimony, in his story to reach people. I have my own story, yes, but I feel that there's different times that God use, will use me or use my story or he will use my husband's story. But a lot more people in today's society relate to my husband's lifestyle, you know, whether it's homelessness, whether it's being gang members, whether it's being using drugs, whether it's being from a broken home, um, violent lifestyle transformation because in his story you see transformation that through christ the transformation that jesus christ can bring through a life so for me i i see that that's part of my job that god has given me it's part of my calling that god has said hey help this man build this man encourage this man to keep going you know love this man uh, feed this man, make this, help this man be healthy, right? All these things that go into where Isaiah can do what God wants him to do. But if I, I don't play my part, then it's going to be even harder for Isaiah to fulfill the destiny that God has for him. And in turn, God takes that and he makes a miracle and he makes a beautiful thing and he makes a way for the both of us to fulfill the destiny that he has for our life. And then, you know, another beautiful thing that I see God has done and is doing in our life is he birthed a beautiful ministry from that. And then these people come in and the team takes hold of that vision. And, and our team is so beautiful and awesome. God has orchestrated it so beautifully together that they come in and they pick that up. They pick up the ball and they start running. And then they carry the vision, you know, and, and then we are able to do both aspects of the ministry, like my husband was talking about in the balance. If we didn't have the team, the gangsters for Jesus behind us that we have that actually carry the vision, then we would not be able to do what we do. There's another thing um, I was going to say, we, we don't have that much longer left, maybe 10 minutes. So I'm going to um, end with this. Um, what I was saying about balance and about everything I see and all this stuff. I mean, I see so much craziness going on in this world, whether it's um, religiousness or, you know, mm -hmm. people fighting about the, the dumbest things. And in our ministry, we don't allow. And, I, and I, I'm saying this for all preachers out there and people like this, man, confront sin. Confront hard things. Confront what you need to in your ministry. Because if you don't, gossip, slander, hurt, hate, pain, all this other stuff that all these ministries deal with, it's never going to leave. Mm -hmm. And I'm the type of pastor, I'm a, I'm a no-nonsense pastor. I'm a soldier. And I give this illustration um, in one of my sermons. And I, and I tell them, are you a zoo lion 
or a wild lion, right? And I tell people, zoo lions are cute, right? You could you could stand behind a big glass in a zoo and look at the look at the lion, and you know you're safe, and you know you ain't gonna get hurt, and you know ain't nothing gonna go wrong. And these these zoo lions are are bathed, you know they look cute, you know they're inside, they're 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 compound in other words, and a lot of them get hand fed, right? And to me, this sounds a lot like the church nowadays. The church is like that nowadays, right? They're, they're zoo lions. And, and, and a lot of times people will get mad at me because I say stuff like this, but I'm like, I don't care if you get mad. It's what it is. Now, if, if you want, if you choose to get mad at a true soldier preaching true gospel, right? That really sees everything that's going on, not just through your little cute little lenses in your four walls, in your city, and you ain't going out here doing nothing where, where you're risking your life, right? Then, then listen to a true soldier. You know, Paul was a true soldier. Jesus was a soldier when he was on this earth in the flesh. Peter was a soldier. Elijah was a soldier. Joseph was a soldier. Abraham was a soldier. There was many soldiers. The disciples, the apostles were straight up soldiers. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm here to tell you, true soldiers still exist. And I'm one of them, right? And my wife's one of them. She travels with me. We, we are soldiers. The Gangs for Jesus ministry, soldiers. We don't just allow everyone in our ministry. We make sure that everyone in our ministry put works in, puts work in, right? Including me. I put work in. And people will say, oh, is that biblical? Yeah. Did Elisha not have Elijah? Did, did Jesus not choose his disciples? Did Paul not have Timothy in his life? The list goes on and on, right? Did Aaron not have um, and, and, and mm -hmm. Moses? Had Aaron. And right? I mean the list goes on and on. But let me say this about a zoo line, right? They even get hand fed. Like and I tell and I tell people this pastors are like that nowadays. They'll be like, oh like Jesus says in end times, right? Ear tickling will be going on. And and if you look at uh Revelation, which a lot of pastors don't like preaching on that that you know our popcorn churches I call them. You know, popcorn churches, the one with big screens, the one with, um, you know, nice cute chairs with smoke machines going on and, and they don't want to oh, tell machine. them, they don't want to tell them nothing wrong, mm -hmm. right? And, and I tell them, man, you might as well have popcorn while you're up in here, right? Because this is a big show. It's a big show. This ain't really what's going on right now. This ain't, this ain't the truth. They say this ain't the real deal. And I see what's going on out here in churches, in the streets, right? In many different aspects, in many mm -hmm. different areas, mm -hmm. I, I see what's going on it, with 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 currency where it's going into digital currency. I see it. We see this traveling. We see a lot of truth, and, and, and so true soldiers have their spiritual eyes open and their spiritual ears open, right? And so the zoo lions, like what I'm talking about, it you know they'll they'll get fed, hand fed, and that's what pastors do nowadays. And Jesus Himself talks to the churches. He's not talking to the people. He's not talking to the broken. He's not talking to the homeless. He's not talking to the prostitutes. He's not talking to the gangbangers. He's not talking to all these people out here, right? Yeah. He's talking Amen. to the churches. Are. So so he's talking to the churches in Revelation. Like, him, our king, mm -hmm. to get on point in end times. So let's say this, right? Zoo lions, they'll get hand fed. And that's what I say a lot of pastors do nowadays. They'll say, oh, you're hurt? And they'll get petted. That's okay. Here's a little treat. Let me give you a treat, right? Let me give you a little beef jerky treat. Now, let's talk about wild lions, right? Wild lions might not look as cute, right? They might be dirty. They might mm -hmm. have scars on them. They might be a little skinnier. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they might be walking around. But if they would see a wild lion, right? A zoo lion. If a zoo lion saw a wild lion and a wild lion saw a zoo lion... The wild lion would look at the, the zoo lion and say, man, you get hand fed? And he would laugh at him. He would say, man, we hunt for our food around here. Mm. We take what we want to eat. In other words, we take territory. Wherever we go, we're lions. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, the, like, the, like the verse says in the Bible, right? The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. Mm -hmm. You see, we're living in times right now 
where true soldiers are needed more than ever. And 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 we can't be zoo lions anymore. That's right. We can't stay inside four walls mm -hmm. and then just say, "Oh, that's that's your job. That's good that you do that, but that's you." No, 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 no. Everyone needs to step it up in these end times. Everyone needs to be a straight up soldier. Everyone needs to be on fire for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and not make their excuses anymore. Right. This we're living in times where people cannot make excuses no more, right? We cannot. Now, a true soldier, right, always uh, offends other soldiers. And it's hard for, for regular churchgoers to hear soldiers like me sometimes. Why? Because we're really living this. Because we will really die for this gospel. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people out here, they're just talking a good game, but they ain't living it. And real soldiers, like I always say, I eat, live, breathe, and will die for this gospel. Will you? Mm -hmm. Right? So we have a very different perspective. Their perspective is, is like, oh, I'm a true soldier. And to them, true soldiers is, oh, mm -hmm. go to church and then go home and do nothing else. Mm -hmm. But you're a good soldier. Mm -hmm. To me, I would call you a fraud, a fake, a liar. Right? You ain't no true soldier to this soldier because I'm really living this and I'm a frontline soldier. You know, what, what do you think, even in the physical realm, let's say if a, if a, a frontline soldier that's risking his life, right? In the battlefield, in a war, in the war zone, in the battle, and, and is losing friends and people are dying and he's there taking territory at a rapid rate. What do you think a soldier like that would say to another soldier that says, "Oh, I'm, I'm a true soldier," but 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 this this soldier is, is, is mm -hmm. just you know no wimps is putting you know like tape on boxes or something like that inside four walls, right? And a war is going on. This this frontline soldier would laugh at him and say, "Man, you ain't no real soldier, bro." We're out here. I think we're too, taking I think we're too, taking this territory. It's because people are are in in their own area. You only really see what's in your box. You know how people say think outside of the that, box. That, that's why I'm saying you're, that. You're it's only, your perception. You, it is. And you're only in your church in your area or or a select state whereas an evangelist or someone like that is traveling and you see like Isaiah said you see the whole perspective or or you're on the street you know, and you're doing ministry in the street, like church in the alley. You see different people. We have a few people that are the same, it's, it's, but we see different people every single service, every single Sunday. It's not the same congregation. And, and it's not even just that what my wife's saying. Uh, just, just so I could break it down for you guys, right? She's saying, keep going. Okay, we'll keep going. Mm -hmm. Just to break it down for you guys and so you guys understand, I'm not just talking about the streets. You see, this is a problem the church has a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot with. And that we see where they're dying. And right. instead of the church is getting on point, they're saying, oh, no, you do that. Right. Or, or whatever. But well, let me tell you about. It like a, a regular yeah, pastor. But let, me, let me tell you about churches, though. Evangelism side. Yeah. But let me tell you about churches, like what my wife's saying. But we can't see death. Yeah. And we can't see homelessness and children and on act the like street it's not going being on. sex trafficked. And people shooting up, literally, I've seen people shooting up in their private area, literally, right in front of my face. Using the bathroom right in front of my face. Um, a lady, I've seen Isaiah preaching on the street and a woman literally sitting right in front of him while he has the microphone preaching. People coming up getting food and clothing and she's sitting there literally smoking, I don't know what, crack, crack being butt naked, and taking off all of her clothes and, and acting crazy, demonic stuff going on. And you see this and we're praying and we're doing all these things and then you go home. But then I go to church on Sunday and it's very hard for me to, like, like now, we can't even stay on subject. We can't even stay on subject of being married or try to give you some teaching advice on a married couple because it, it has gotten so severe in this world. The enemy is so prevalent in our society that 
you, we can't talk about anything other than, you know what, we need to be out here doing something. It's the urgency of the return of Jesus Christ. There is an urgency in the spiritual realm. If you pay attention and you start to feel that anxious, we're all like, oh, I'm feeling anxious. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. No, we need to be anxious about the return of our Lord and Savior, not in a, in a scary way. In a reverence way that we need to spread the word. We need to be on point ourselves. Be ready for the king to come. Yeah. Keep your lamps full of oil. Keep your wicks trim, trimmed. Keep ready for, and watch for Jesus Christ. And tell everybody. Even the church. It's no longer about how what we need to learn in the Bible. Read your Bible and you better read it every day and know it. There ain't no, no more lesson the lessons are running out. We should know every lesson and, by now. And I believe, I believe Jesus is coming so soon with everything yes. that I see. I, I don't think we have five years left on this earth, fam. I'm honest. I'm being honest with you. And, and, and I'm not just talking about streets now. What my wife is talking about, I agree a hundred percent. I preach this, mm -hmm. but I'm going to, I'm going to go a little bit deeper with it. Is that cool with you guys? You know, most people, they just want to stay ankle high in the water, right? Mm -hmm. In the ocean. But if you go deep, right? If you go deep and you dive deep, it's more dangerous. There's dangerous things down in the ocean if you go if you go deep sea diving very very deep. But it, it's also more beautiful, right? And it's the same thing in God's kingdom. How deep do you want to go? How 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 deep do you want to go in all this? When it comes to teaching, preaching, evangelizing, prophesying, you know, taking demons out, how, how far you want to go with this? Right. Do you just want to scratch the surface or, or do you want to go deep? Right. Now, let's go deep a little bit here. Let's talk about some other stuff because that's, that's all true and we, and, 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 and we see this. Mm -hmm. This is street stuff we deal with and, and, and we're an amazing ministry, to be honest. And I don't just accept anyone in our ministry. Like I said, everyone puts work in, including me. If not, we will prune you. We will clip you. People say, oh, that, that, that's not biblical. Yeah, it is. Jesus says he will prune what is not good mm -hmm. and a greater connection will come out of it when it's pruned. You, you want to stay stuck on ignorance and, and you want to get a big head because a lot of people roll with me and they say, oh, you know, we're, we know the gang's preacher and they think they're doing it bigger than, than me or a lot of other people out here now. Homie, we've been doing this for a long time. I've been preaching 22 years now. We, I got some rank up in here. And I've been doing this for a while. And I've been just been seeing in a cute little seat like you have. I've been hearing the devil in all areas, including churches. That's why I still go to churches. Now, let uh, this is what I want to talk about. It's the churches, right? Jesus has problems with the churches. Paul, all them, they stood against Pharisees and Sadducees. Because they're very religious. Now I'm going to talk about some of the religious things I see in churches now as a couple. We've seen actual demons talking, speaking in tongues in churches that me and my wife recognize and no one else recognizes it. That's how spiritually dead churches are nowadays. As a marriage, we see this everywhere we go. Another thing we see is religion. Right? Well, many churches say they'll accept anyone. But they're lying. Because once they go in and they stink or they have tattoos or they're not dressed the way they want them to dress or they don't act the way they want them to act or, or they're different or, or they make them feel horrible for even being there because they're looking at them so much. And a lot of times I know so many that kick them out. They kick people out. And, 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 and because they stink because of all this other stuff. Now, this is what I want to talk about, right? This is this is like the lion type thing, right? The lion inside the zoo, the zoo, the zoo lion, right? You you will see churches. I've been to churches where they will fight, literally fight. This is what they're fighting about inside four walls, right? Oh, you don't have um pants on, or you don't have a dress on. Or you have a tattoo showing. Or all oh, this person stinks. Or all oh, this, this, this person doesn't, 
act like us, dress like us. You know, he didn't go to the same college as us, whichever prestigious college it is. You guys got to understand, I've done it with the biggest preachers in the world. I've sat in rooms with the biggest preachers in the world. All the old Christian oldie singers, all the Christian rappers, the big dogs, I know them. And I've seen a lot of these people fall because instead of them being humble and staying humble, it gets to their head and they start thinking that there's something they're not. They start thinking they're like Jesus, man. Pride comes in. And 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 for me, I've seen so many of them fall and it's so sad. And it affects the whole church. But when I see stuff like this going on everywhere, man. Throughout churches where, where they're fighting for all these things. I see gossip. I see slander. I see jealousy. I see hatred. I see people coming against one another. In churches, churches not being able to work together because they're so religious, right? All this stuff, Amen. While, while what my wife was saying, we're seeing all this brokenness in this world right now. Yet, you're going to fight about if someone has a dress that covers someone's toes, a girl's toes, to be in your church? For real? Uh, like, like, to me, fam, this, the, as a couple... What we see is ridiculous. I, I think it's time for us to be real soldiers. You know who the devil is truly scared of? When it comes to couples being one, it's frontline soldiers. Because we take the territory. Like I'm telling you, you know who, who, who is scared even in the physical realm? When there's armies fighting against other armies? It's not the people sitting in desks. It's not the people that, that are looking cute that have ties on and, and, and all this stuff on, right? It's, it's, it's not them. It's not them. The enemy is scared of the frontline soldiers that are taking their territory on the spot. That's who the enemy is scared of. And that's who our enemy is scared of. Mm -hmm. and, and we get attacked hardcore. Now, th this is how I was going to talk about getting attacked now. Because we talked about a lot of she other said, stuff. Up, so I'm gonna, down. so I'm gonna, yeah, and I tell people that all the time, sis, we bend, but we, but we bend. don't break. Ain't no one breaking right here. The devil could prolong stuff, but he ain't stopping nothing, right? Yeah. And, and, and when you're on one accord and you understand that, now I'm not saying no marriage is perfect and we could be arguing, we could whatever, but when we get to that, the, where we're gonna preach or wherever we're going, we're on one accord. You best believe it. Yeah. We're on one accord. I think we're soldiered up. And us being together, that's one door that we're not opening to the enemy. You know, We stay where, tight knit. Even though maybe you don't want to go. There's times I don't want to go. Um, and Or Isaiah does. Or maybe a heat on and I do. Whatever. It's more more me than him. But, I always go. Um, <laughs> but I think it's necessary, ladies. Even if you're not wanting to go with your other... your or Even if it's a man, right? Whoever your spouse is. Even sometimes you're not wanting to go with them, but you do need to make yourself known in their life, in their church, and in, in whatever it is that they're doing for God. You need to be present with your partner. Because the more you're separated like that, the more you're giving the devil an opening into your life and into your marriage. Wow. And the more you're giving uh, a window for temptation and stuff. And, we, and then we want to blame each other. But when you're not there for one another, that causes a rift in things. And then don't think the devil won't send somebody yes. to step up and try to yes. be there where and you're not this there. Is, you know? And let me say this. This is why it's so important. And I tell my ministry this. And this goes for everyone listening. All leadership. I don't care who you are. Now I'm I'm one of the big dogs hitting the devil heart. But let me tell you something. I get a, a, attacked enough by the enemy. I get attacked enough by religious people. I get death threats emailed to me. I get I, I get a lot. You guys wouldn't even comprehend the stuff that I deal with. Mm -hmm. and, but I could care less. Like for me, death threats is a joke. Uh, like you ain't gonna threaten me with something stupid like that. Like for me, I'm going to glory when that happens. So I could care less. I tell them, check my schedule. Go gangsterpreacher.com, fam. You'll see exactly where I'm at. And I tell people all the time, at all churches I'm preaching at, if someone comes in with a gun and says, denounce Christ, or everyone's going to get shot up in here, I'm like, you're with the wrong gangster preacher up in here because we're all going to die, right? But one thing that my ministry, we do not put up with 
is any of this stuff, this religious stuff that the church does. Mm -hmm. If someone's doing this, we will clip you. So I have to be and it, and, it, and it is biblical. <laughs> and it is biblical because it says prune. Now, let me let me say this because there's some naysayers out there say, "Oh, that's not right." Is it not? G Jesus himself is going to clip people. Yes. You're going to stand on judgment day one day and it's not going to be grace anymore. And the ultimate clipping for those naysayers out there that say, oh no, that's not biblical. Yeah, it is. One day, you're going to be judged. And if you don't go to heaven, mm -hmm. you are getting clipped by the Most High. You are getting clipped by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And you're going to eternal damnation. And you're going to be in the lake of fire yeah. for eternity. That's what it is. Yeah. Period. So, so I, I, we do this. Because we're, our ministry and me and my wife are not going to give the devil not even an inch. Because we deal with enough as it is. We don't need the Lord humbling us. To top it off with a cherry, which is the worst thing that could happen. Is God himself humble you because you don't want to be humble, right fam? And so we don't want that. Mm -hmm. Now let me say this about attacks and then we'll end. Um, we talked about many other subjects. Amen. Many different Amen, things. Sister. But I'm going to talk about... Uh, attacks because my wife talked about that my now in the last three and a half years i almost died twice once from covid where i was in the hospital for a week and then on oxygen for three months i almost died once in mississippi with with a gallstone stuck in my gall neck it was poisoning my blood i almost died again i was in the hospital this time for two over two weeks and i and i couldn't uh travel preaching for three months now besides this our finances have been attacked. Mm -hmm. Me and my wife have been attacked with many different things. We've lost two we've, homes. We've lost multiple homes. We've lost a lot of things. Two homes. People have we've came lost against us. Years. People have came against us. A lot of things have happened that have came against us, right? And I think a lot of times people don't understand this when they say we want to be like you, gangs preacher. I'm like, man, you guys don't even know what you're saying. It's like saying, like, man, I want to be a frontline soldier, but then when you start seeing all the attacks, all the death, all, all, all the, the horrific things behind the scenes, you see, people want the glory, mm -hmm. but they don't want to be obedient right. and sacrifice, right. which, which in the Bible it says obedience is better than sacrifice, and Christ was obedient unto death. Right. And he sacrificed. God sacrificed his son for us. Right. So we can understand this too. And be obedient ourselves. So all these attacks come, right? And, and there's so many more that I can I can just pinpoint. Mm -hmm. And, and, and yes, we become a big target, big target for the enemy. But we also have more grace too. That's right. And, and I want to say this, right? Grace is sufficient. We, we don't just do this for money. Like There's people that bless us tremendously. Uh, with a lot we've been blessed but we've been attacked a lot too but let me say this we we just came back we just we just came from visalia and the guy that i did the event for there he didn't have that much money to give me and i didn't care i i know that god is gonna bless us one way or another mm -hmm. but attacks come that way too mm -hmm. but this this person we just left from Many people were saved. Many, many souls were saved. People's bondages were broken. Yeah. Healing was flowing. Prophecy was flowing. Everything was flowing at this crusade I was at. And this man gave it his all. Excellence. He gave it his best. And that's what I tell people. If, if you're not going to give God your best, then don't do this. But he might not give us much, but he gave his best. And to me, that matters more. Than, than someone that has millions of dollars and then just gives me a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's like the widow mite. Right. This man did this. And there's many places we go to that do this for us. Now us, as a traveling couple, we're not, we're not dying, you know, for money and finances. And, and people get our hotels. People pay for our food. People give us good offerings. People bless us. People, like I said, they, we, we saw our merch out. There's mm -hmm. pastors out here that we deal with that are true soldiers, frontline soldiers that are making almost nothing and standing and standing and fighting this battle. Mm -hmm. And 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 there's there's people out here, man, that are doing all this. Now this guy out here, he might not give us that much and stuff like that, but I seen him 
And he got us a BNB that was beautiful. And this guy does something that pays very little. Very little. And he and he gave it his all. And you know, if you're gonna do this as a couple in ministry, give it your all. Well, don't have it, one foot in try. and one foot out. Don't and don't and allow I, the devil to run you out of what you're, nothing, what you're doing. Nothing. You know? And I always say this, you know, most people and most preachers will say, Well, or people will say, I have one foot in and one foot out. And I tell them, homie. I got one foot in the church and I got one foot in heaven like the Apostle Paul already, baby. Like I, I'm already ready to go to heaven up in here. Like this is this is not a game to us. Me and my wife were 24 seven soldiers, That's baby. Right. And you can't deter, you can't allow the devil to deter you from the mission at hand. Because see, that's the main thing for the tactics, for the, for being the target for the attacks of the enemy. He brings in things to see where you're gonna buckle. He, he brings things in to see where you're gonna it's start, in any area he where can. you're gonna pause God's work. You know, like, for example, our latest, uh, thing, um, we were living in a house, right? That was Isaiah's grandmother's house. Okay, so we're living in this house and it's, it, she passed away. So it's a reverse mortgage and we don't know how long or about buying the house. And the executor is the person who decides everything. And, and in this case, they didn't want anything to do with anything. So they didn't go to do this. They didn't file the right paperwork. They made no steps. So, and, and unbeknownst to us, we thought on our end, we're over here saying, hey, do this, do that. We did everything on our end, but our hands were tied. So then they decided we, they were going, we had scheduled to be on the road for 30 days. We were out traveling for more than 30 consecutive days. Like 45 days, like and a month and so a half. So we weren't at our home and we weren't scheduled to go home. And like two weeks into it, we get this letter, we, or Isaiah's sister calls and they get a letter in the mail and says, well, your house will be auctioned off on, uh, what was it? April 7th or something May. like that, or May 7th. Mm -hmm. So we had like, what was it? I don't know. A ten, week? Yeah, 10 days, something like that. Well, we were scheduled to be preaching for the next yep. two weeks. Not, we weren't even going to be home until June. But you see, this is this is where I say don't be moved. Because exactly, that's where I'm going. The, 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 uh, this is where I was gonna say don't be moved because my wife told me what are we gonna do, and I yep. said, look at the trees, look at the beauty. Yeah. We we're in Montana. Are you I said, gonna let that devil I said, stop let, let, you? God, God, I said God's gonna work up in exactly. here. Exactly, He's gonna do something great. Because see, we and then the, said, the oh, house just before. forget it. Let's go home. Because I said, are you yeah. sure about this? Should we like pause this and go home and make sure our kids? Because I have my my son, his wife, and my grandson live with us. So when we're gone, they're there taking care of the home and my dogs. I had a sick doggy, and I, I had this dog for 15, almost 15 years. She was 14 and a half years old, and she was very ill. And so I'm like, you know what, Isaiah? I know God wants us to do things, but I got things at home I need to take care of. I can't keep ignoring my life, you know? This is not going to go away. I need to be there taking care of our own things, right? This is the things I'm saying. And he said, you know what? We're going to preach this gospel and the devil's not going to stop nothing. We're not going to slow down and God's going to take care of everything you watch. And we're going to trust God to do it. And if it's God's will, he wants us to have this. He's going to make a way for us. And so I said, okay, so we just prayed, you know, we just kept going. And we go home and Isaiah goes to an auction. He went to the auction where they were going to sell our house. And 55 houses were sold. But guess what? Not our house. Our house was the only house in the auction that nobody wanted to buy. So not that we're keeping the house. That's not the moral. The point is, now we have more time. <laughs> now well, here we are again on the road. And we have until like August to get out, right? So, but it was on our terms. My terms. I My husband terms. dictated the terms of the negotiation on when we were going to leave, how, when we decided, and get this, and they're going to pay us. They're paying us money to get out. Yeah. So not only does the devil have to pay his due, but he'll wait till we decide. Yeah. And, and also, 
Let, let me say this. <laughs> God's so good. We're, we've been building a house already in Ohio where my wife's from. And it's almost done. And we're not going to owe a penny because I've been paying it cash. Amen. And it's going to be a beautiful house. Amen. And let me tell you, the house before this one, just so people know how we get attacked. I never was late on a payment. I was always two, three months ahead for yeah. 11 years. Yeah. And we find out out of a thousand homes that have been frauded, our house was one of them. The house before this one. Yeah. It was not our fault either. Yeah. So you see how the devil attacks? Yeah. But let me tell you, this, this is what, what separates frontline soldiers, right? That are preachers, that, that are, 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 are ministries. Yes. Couples or, or not, right? Frontline soldiers, I'm talking about, period. This is what separates us. Um, we have that mindset, you know, that, that we could, we could die when all this stuff could happen. We have like a, like I said, like a wild lion mindset. And we understand, right, what 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 the attacks are, are gonna be, and, and and what he could attack with, and and anything can come. But we're standing solid on the rock. Amen. We ain't being moved, and the devil's not dictating nothing. And the and the person that my wife's talking about that was that was in control of that house or executor or whatever was my mom, and she's not right in her head. So since she bring up the little, uh, you know, trip away card, that's the only thing she's ever done for me my whole life. Never done nothing for me, to be honest, since I was a little kid. And and she did not pay attention to anything. Yeah. Well, she refused to sign. And and so and so everything again not our fault. Yeah. But you see, the enemy will attack that's you right. through military mindset. The, the the enemy will attack you through everything and anything. Yes. And we cannot give him an inch. Now now I'm gonna say this too. Because my, my wife was saying, oh, should we go back? I have things to take care of. We took care of our kids in our household till they grew up. Our kids are grown adults. Right. So there's a lot of preachers out here right now. And a lot of people, they leave their kids when they're little. And they say, oh, I'm going to go do all this other stuff. And they're saving the world. And their their kids are going to hell in, in, in droves. And they think that they're that they're being, um you know, very godly or very spiritual. And the truth is they're being very ignorant. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's not a good thing to do. Me and my wife, we still preach. I've been preaching twenty two years. Our my our youngest kid is gonna be twenty five. Twenty four. Yeah. It's gonna be twenty five, our youngest kid. <clears throat> so our kids are grown. So we started doing this the way we're doing it and preaching the gospel where we're, we're we're preaching it after we did what God wanted us to do. That's God's order. Mm -hmm. God's order is God, then your wife, right? Then your kids, mm -hmm. then your ministry, and we did that. And 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 people will say, well, well, why are they so blessed? Because we did it in God's order. You see, that's why I told her, well, we ain't stopping nothing. We we ain't stopping nothing. We're keeping this devil, this 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 line devil, this enemy, yeah. right? Because we're frontline soldiers, and frontline soldiers, we ain't backing up. We're taking territory, whether he likes it or not. The enemy is going to hear our armor shake and clank mm -hmm. every single time our feet hit the ground. Every time we get out our bed, every morning, the devil is going to hear our armor shake and clank. And my wife one time said, it doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man. Because when you have your armor on and, you, and, you, and your face guard is closed, the enemy can't see in the spiritual realm whether you're a man or you're a woman. All you are is a soldier, a straight up soldier. You're male or female. All he knows is that you're a soldier. And that's, that's what right. we are, frontline soldiers, baby, that's right. as a couple, right? That's right. I hope you guys enjoyed this live. Well, also, I hope you, you guys know, are blessed. You know what I said? You can't let the devil, like what you were preaching, you know, the Bible says when you put your hands to the plow, not to look back. Yep. You know, and sometimes I think, I don't know if it's a woman thing or, or what it is, maybe a man, but for me, being a woman, a lot of times we get caught up in the things that are of this world, so material instead of spiritual, and we forget that our hands are to the plow and our concerns cannot be on this world. I'm not saying don't to be careless with your life, but when you entrust your life and everything in your life, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your health, whether it's your finances, whether it's your children, every single thing that pertains to this life on earth, when you trust God with it, when you give it to God and you say, you know what, Lord, I will serve you just like Job. 
I'll, though they slay me, yet I'll serve him. I'll serve you, Lord, with the clothes on my back. Because you know what? He feeds the ravens and he clothes the lilies and everything that he, he makes it all pretty out here. So we have nothing to worry and nothing to fear of. It's the, it's the thoughts in the carnal mind and the cares of this world that entangle us, everybody. You keep your eyes on Jesus and remember, even if you're down to the last cracker and the last set of clothing on your back, believe God, believe God, get up and go out and worry about someone else. Because when you put your cares in the hands of God and you begin to take care of other people and you begin to pray for other people and you begin to give to other people, even when you don't have it to give, he said, if you got two jackets, Give your neighbor one. So if you got two sets of clothing, you can give. If you got more than one donut in your closet, you can give. It ain't, it ain't always having abundance. It's being willing to give it all for the kingdom of God, for the gospel's sake. To do what? To win a soul. Cause you don't know who you might touch and who's watching your life. Just like my sister said, she told her daughter, She's going to serve God and even if she's martyred. Our daughter had a dream and we were already martyred. They were lining them up and they were lining her up and segregating people who didn't have the chip. And she said in the dream she was crying but she felt peace because she knew that we were already in heaven and that she was about to meet us in heaven. My daughter had that dream and she's 27 years old. Amen. So you be encouraged today. Keep standing. Stand strong. Do what God has called you to do. Get out of the four walls. You can still go be a light at your church. Nobody's saying leave your church. Back your pastor. But make sure your church is preaching the whole word of God. From, and from doing Genesis something. to Revelation. We don't leave Revelation and saving now. souls. And go save souls. Witness to this world. Don't stay stuck on ignorance. Stay on down. fire. Support your partner. If you've been wrong, go back and say, you know what, honey? I was watching this program and I want to say I'm sorry and I'm going to do better. And I love you. I believe in you and I'm going to pray for you. And if your partner don't serve Christ, say the same thing. I'm going to pray for you that you'll serve the God that I serve because he wants every soul that we can get a hold of. We want to bankrupt hell and fill up heaven for Amen. Christ, right? Amen. 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 We love you guys, fam. Um, I'm gonna actually Amen. be sh be sharing this on my my YouTube, so Don't you guys. Don't say stuck on stupid. You guys, you guys, I said stuck on ignorance. <laughs> you said. <laughs> she said, say, "Don't stay stuck on stupid." Amen. Amen. Don't stay stuck on stupid. <laughs> Don't. Amen. So um, I'm gonna be we love you guys. I'm gonna be sharing this on my YouTube channel, and um, it's also on uh, gangsterpreacher.com. You just go gangsterpreacher.com and you'll see all that. And I've seen a lot of you guys saying you're going to get the book and stuff like that. Amen. Or you ordered it. I appreciate the love. Yes. God bless you guys. Bless you. Um, check out the the um, gangsterpreacher.com schedule. And you'll see my, my three-month schedule. I'm always booked. I have crazy dates. I'm in all city, states, and areas. Uh, throughout the U.S. Amen. and also Latin America. You guys check it out. And um, oh, I hope to you, see Gina. you guys. We I forgot hope, to tell her too. Hold I on. hope to see you guys um soon. Yes. And I would love to meet you guys, man, in person. I, I appreciate, uh, before my wife says this, mm -hmm. I appreciate all the love that you guys show this gangster preacher and beautiful and gangsters for Jesus. Amen. And um I, I, I would love to meet you at one of uh, my dates. I'm Amen. not like these other preachers. I don't think um I'm some superstar or stuff like that. I'm real down to earth. I'm real cool. Um You don't have to come up to me tripping out, acting like you're seeing a ghost. I'm, I'm real good peeps, man, and, um, and, and I'm down to earth and, and, and I'm humble Amen. and I appreciate Amen. every single one of you that buy merch from me, Thank that you, buy sister. books from me, and that just, um, are a blessing to me, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And my wife and to our ministry. We love you guys very we much. We love you guys. We love you, Yvonne. And Gina, uh, Miss Gina Montez is doing okay. She, uh, doesn't really come out too much anymore. Um, she went through a big thing and the enemy just, he just really Attacks did him. a number on her. And, uh, yeah, she's never really been the same. Um, but we do our gangsters for Jesus drive by every now and then and she'll open the door and kind of talk a few minutes. We, we don't see her as much anymore. Um, 
but just continue to pray for her. Pray that God just keeps, you know, keep knocking on that door. That's the thing. Even though Gina is not exactly the same, we know what God is capable of doing. And we know that he turns these tests into a testimony. And what the enemy means for evil, God will turn to good. And we don't give up on Gina. We keep going and we're going to keep going till we're the day. Keep fighting it's over. for these souls. That's right. So, um, you know, just keep her in prayer. And we love you guys. Thank you for asking about her. Um, beautiful woman of God. We, we you know, and like I said, we, we don't give up on Gina. We're just waiting on God. Amen? Amen. Because the devil's a liar. And we love you, Sister Yvonne. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for everyone that was watching. May you be blessed. May you stay safe. May you be booted up and suited up, as they say. Suited and booted. However, <laughs> stay strong in Christ, right? And we love you guys, and God bless you. Amen. Much love, fam. God I mean, bless y'all. You know how to finish? <laughs>